Welcome to Anthology's quick training videos. This particular video is going to be on aspects of security, things like what folder you should have shared and what folder um, security permissions should there be. If you are a more than one user system, you have a server and a workstation or more than one workstation, your workstations probably have a drive letter mapped back over to your server, possibly G as in George, that is accessing the shared anthology folder on your server. Right now I'm using a Windows 7 machine and I do have an icon for anthology on my desktop. I can very easily find or double check what my path to anthology is on my server. So I can right click on my anthology icon and I will do properties. And this property windows, let me move that around, you'll, you can see the target or the start end that shows me the path that my anthology data is installed in. And again, I'm on a single user machine right now, so mine is all local, but yours might look something like g colon backslash val dot exe. That just means that your drive letter is g drive over on the server. But we want to make sure that this folder has both enough sharing permissions and security levels to allow users, Windows users, that will be logged into your computer to make sure they can add a new record, that they can delete an old record, that they can edit information on an existing record, create temp files when they maybe are running some certain kinds of reports and the like. So once we've double checked our location of our anthology folder, we can actually also do this open file location and that's going to bring up our Windows Explorer. So now we're looking at the installation directory of our anthology on the hard drive of this machine. Again, you probably would be on your server doing the same. So on the left side, I'm going to select my anthology folder and you'll see many others here, but that's my, my testing stuff. But on the anthology folder on the left side, now that it's highlighted, I will right click and I'll choose properties. You'll see sometimes that this read only box is checked. That's normal. It does turn on and off depending if you have recently re-indexed or recently upgraded. It, depending on what you're working on, normally you can just ignore it. For this one round, I'm just going to do a quick uncheck of read only and say apply. That just makes sure that for the moment I'm about to change things that I need to make sure my particular user that I'm logged on as right now with Windows does have the right to change things. And this secondary pop-up is just saying, do you want also the sub files in folders to have that change too? In this case, yes, I do. I'll say OK. It might think for a moment and show you that it's applying those attribute updates. But now I need to go to my sharing tab. And again, this is I'm going to emulate as if we were on a server and that there were separate workstations. So on the server itself, I need to share my anthology folder. And mine has already been done, but you may find that you have a uh, share button. So once you say share this folder and leave it as the anthology folder name if it asks, I'm going to go into the advanced sharing area and this is where I can go in and add more people. Maybe I know that my workstation will have two different Windows users that might log in and each user could have separate permissions. In this case for Anthology, we want them to have full control. So by clicking on the permissions button, now that it says it's shared, and you probably don't want to mess with the limit of number of users. That's a, a higher Windows level thing. We'll go to permissions. Right now you can see I have an alpha user. It's designated by this little single person icon versus what's called a group where you can see it looks like there's a couple of people there. So my singular alpha user, they have the ability to do full control, which means they can change and they can read write files my overall any of my users that I might have on Windows users to this computer same thing I've added them and made sure they have full control and the everyone group which is another way to kind of maintain several users at once I've made sure they can now also have those full controls if you need to add someone else let me do add. I can either type in by hand a specific name if I know them all know that name already, or I can do advanced and find now to show me a list of all the possible users that this machine has. There are a lot. Um, and you can see that I have a few different users. I have a user called Gamma. 
And we also have lots of other users. There are groups like Power Users. That's a group. Most of my users are all part of the Everyone group, but you might say your authenticated users should be allowed, especially if you're going to have um, maybe a certain library or location where everybody saves their files to. You want to make sure everybody who is logged in has access to it. You could say that this particular group should get that access. So I've highlighted the one I want. I could highlight several and I'll say OK. Now it has that name in there. I'll click, <coughs> excuse me, I'll click again, OK again. So now I've got my authenticated users group, but notice when I first add them, they do not have full control. They do not have change control. I do want them because I need them to be able to edit files and such. So by checking the allow full control, everything else gets checked. From here, it's just a simple matter of saying apply and then OK. So now we're back at the advanced sharing. I'll OK once again. And apply and OK are the same thing. Apply just means apply it. OK means apply and close. Common mis misnomer with Windows. Now I've shared that folder. Now I need to make sure that as far as individual security settings go, and this is Windows stuff. It's if it's not terribly familiar, that's okay. Just know we want sharing and security to be set the same way. So here again is a list of my different users. So there's my alpha user again, and you can see they have check marks for allow full control, read write. Um, there's many other commands, but just the very least I want them to have full control. Same thing for my administrator. Now my administrator, and this is the true Windows administrator, that user or group is already defaulted to saying they have full control. That's why those check marks are gray. My individual users, I've gone through and they must have inherited some settings, some permissions from other settings in Windows, but I've gone in and explicitly said that the this particular group, user group has full control. So once you've got your sharing and security tabs set, um, the other factor you might want to look into is your antivirus and security or Windows Firewall or Microsoft Security Essentials or McAfee. There are many security programs out there. You should have in place what are called exclusions or exceptions because we want those security programs to do their day-to-day -day job of scanning the files, any files that are traveling across on your computer, making sure they're not infected. But we want it to do that as a schedule at night to check the anthology folder. We don't necessarily want those security programs stopping every bit of anthology traffic to stop and inspect it. You should scan the drive at night to make sure there's no infections, but if it's stopping the, every tr the traffic from all day long, it's stopping it, it's slowing it down, it means you might time out on a credit card transaction, you might time out on a CD fetch, um, bringing a title in. So if you simply make sure that your security programs, and I will show you briefly, say my Windows Firewall, I'll go to Control Panel from my Start menu. And in my Windows Firewall area, right there, I'm going to make sure that my particular program I want to allow is allow in the Allow list. So I'll go to the Allow Program or Feature. And here's a list of all the programs that my system knows that it's okay for it to have access. And I may already have my anthology program. I may not. It's very easy to set. I may have to say change settings if I had a different kind of user logged into Windows right now, but I'm the true admin, so I can change my settings. But I'm going to say allow another program. And then I'm going to browse to the directory that has my anthology folder, whether it's on my local machine because this, the machine I'm on is the server, or if it's even just accessing the, giving it permission to at, let anthology from your server access the internet. So that's the other part I want to do is now I'm going to go through and say browse. And again, locate my directory where I had my anthology installed. Could be that G drive all over again. And my anthology is under my program files folder under anthology. And I do need, at least with the Windows firewall exception, I need to tell it my exact file that they need to um, do what's called the exclusions or the exceptions. And that is going to be my val.exe. I'll say open. And now I can say that this is should be added to my list of exceptions. And you can see I have several installs already. But I do want to make sure at the very least my home slash work 
network is checked. If there's a chance you're going to be out using uh, somebody's Wi-Fi on a wireless connection, your your network type may need to be set to public as well. So even if you're out on Wi-Fi, you'd be able to run your anthology on your laptop as a standalone. And then just OK from there. So real quick wrap up, just make sure if you're installing Anthology for the first time, if you're going to be on a server system, you want to make sure that your Anthology folder on the server at the very least does have people set for advanced sharing so that they have the full permissions and that they also are set up on the security tab as having full permissions as well. That should bypass any little odd issues you might get, like messages saying cannot update file, cannot read this, cannot access, no permission. Those steps right there should help you out with those cases. Um, if you do have any questions, just contact support. Um, if you have a very specialized network, we might recommend you talk to a, a local tech, but more often than not, we can give you some pointers. That should do it, and we will hold more sessions going forward. Just keep checking our Anthology YouTube channel and it is on www.youtube.com slash user slash anthology channel.